Hey guys, welcome back to Head of Canon. I'm Tay. You can see I'm a huge Godzilla fan. I just got finished watching Godzilla X Con New Empire. And I'll make it clear I am not Chris Duckman or Jeremy Johns. I don't review movies. I sometimes review games on the channel. But I'm not a re movie reviewer, so please bear with me with this review. This is just my impression as a Godzilla fan. So take it as that. I want to make it clear. You're going to see this a lot in a lot of these reviews regarding this movie. This movie is not Godzilla Minus One. They just so happen to have Godzilla in them. Completely different movies. Godzilla Minus One is a war drama film. This movie is Fast and the Furious with monsters. That's what it is. If I want to compare it to past Godzilla films, this movie is like Godzilla Final Wars with American budget. Just straight action, weird, bizarre human subplots, and that's what you get. Let's start with the monsters itself. So again, I'm a huge Godzilla fan. Godzilla was glorious in this film. There are some things I want to talk about, and granted, I want to make it clear, this is not a spoiler review. Godzilla's awesome in this film. His things are breathtaking. He's just straight up badass Godzilla we always love. I will say though, his evolved form, you see in the marking, this purple form with the new spikes on his arms and new dorsal fins and slimmer body. While it looks cool, it's very underwhelming. But again, I love Godzilla's evolved form. The look of it, he looks awesome. He doing the movie is awesome, but I just feel like the evolved form was really unwarranted. It didn't really feel like he didn't need that from what we've seen in the film. If you watch the movie and come back to this video, you understand what I'm saying. It felt like they did it for toy sales, which they probably did. That's what a lot of these action movies like Transformers and the Marvel films do when it comes to new suits and costumes and new forms just for toy sales. And that's what it felt like here, just for more toy sales. So with both monsters, Godzilla and Kong, we get just more of them and that's okay. That's what we want, and the movie delivers with that. So with Kong, we see more of the Hollow Earth and its inhabitants, which I'm a huge fan of. I love looking at the Hollow Earth lore from the comic books and movies. And we see more Kaiju here and there, new Titan species and all, which I'm, that's to me that I eat it up. It reminds me of National Geographic, but monsters, and I'm a huge fan of that. And get more of that in this movie. You know what's interesting though, you, with the marketing, you know Kong's story is about him trying to find Apes like him, Titans like him, Titan is Kong species. And we get more of that in this movie. You see that in the trailers. It's, that's not a spoiler, but Kong finally meets other uh, apes like him. And they're, they're goons. <laughs> they're just bad apes. They're like opposites of him. The apes, Titan is Kong species remind me of the planet apes. Um, how they utilize things around them for weapons and how they create things. And you see that here. The Titans, like the Kong species, are very quote-unquote human-like not saying that they act like feel humans they still act like animals but they're clearly more intelligent than other species of titans in this universe they're very expressive you can feel the sadness the joy kong sometimes smirks uh let's talk about the villain scar king scar king okay i'll make this clear i like scar king he was a cool villain but again marketing and the, what's said in the movie hypes him up at this all-powerful world ending threat and i didn't believe that and what the film showed me i still didn't believe that in fact i would say it was a mistake showing king Ghidorah so early in this universe because king Ghidorah felt more of a threat and granted while i think scar king is a fraud <laughs> that's a joke he's still a cool character i love how expressive he is here he's like a, a old war obsessed power hungry anti-kong really cool to see him on screen it is cool to see him on screen when you see him, he's kind of menacing. He's like a corrupt version of Kong. He's scrawnier, slightly smaller, clearly evil. But he's like anti-Kong, and it's really cool to see. I love how he fights. He's more fluid. He's more faster and agile than Kong. Kong is the, the bulky type. He's the lean type. He utilize those feats around Kong and Godzilla. And really cool to see. As we still talk about the monsters, one of the few things I have a gripe with this franchise since Godzilla X or since Godzilla vs. Kong. Again, I'm a huge Godzilla fan, hence the shirt, Team Godzilla. Always been a fan since I was born. I understand that these, this universe has transitioned to a Godzilla and Kong universe, but it felt so biased towards Kong. It felt like it's dedicated to him only. These movies feel just, it feel like Kong films that just so happen to have Godzilla in it. I, 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 as a fan, I get annoyed with that. I don't understand the uh, attraction to Kong. 
And uh, that's not me hating on that character. I like this Kong. Like, I think this is the most interesting version of King Kong we ever have. Ever. You do some exciting things with this version of King Kong. But at the same time you watch these movies, it feels like they're turning these movies into King Kong movie. But let's throw Godzilla in there for ticket sales. And that's what it feels like. Especially, this is the worst, this movie is the worst example of that. It feels like a Kong film that just so happened to have Godzilla in. That's very aggravating. I know we got Godzilla minus. Some people complain that it's kind of selfish asking for more. But I'm like, no. I, you call it this and that. But it doesn't feel this and that. It feels like one side compared to the other. You see what I'm saying here? And I, it gets annoying. At least share. Make a balance here. These movies feel, again, I'm repeating myself. Kong films that just happen to have Godzilla, Godzilla in it. That's very aggravating. Please change that going forward. I'm getting tired of this weird transition. I know why they're doing it in terms of like just more ticket sales. But at the same time, I just found Godzilla as a character more interesting. His powers, his design, what he does, it's just more interesting than Kong. Again, I want to make clear again, I'm not a Kong hater. I just prefer Godzilla. And what we get is always bite size. I want a four course meal with a Hollywood Godzilla film. You see what I'm saying here? So tired of that transition they're doing here. Please change that going forward. So with the humans itself, uh, yeah, they're nothing special. Gia Kong's girl, the little girlfriend he has. I don't know, like, the size. I don't know why I did that. But the the his friend Gia, she's she's an interesting character uh, compared to most of MonsterVerse, which isn't saying much. You know, she's a deaf character. She can't speak, and uh, they utilize that in this movie a lot. In fact, I would say what they do with Gia. If you watch Godzilla 2014, that that more serious, grounded Godzilla film, and watch this movie, you will kind of like go like what happened and that's not a bad thing it just it reminds me of fast and furious 1 and fast and furious 9 10 11 what the heck they're doing you know these they weird transition from this grounded racing film to this action superhero movie that's what Godzilla vs kong does because of x kong god his names are stupid Godzilla x kong that's what this movie is is we're out of the grounded territory now this movie is straight up showa era godzilla final wars type movies going forward if toa continue the serious movies while hollywood does the action-based movies that's okay again this movie does that uh, it knows what it is and you know going into this there was kids there that were clearly monster fans godzilla fans or kong fan that's the interesting thing about that you now growing up i had a whole bunch of godzilla toys. used to make my own little subplots with the characters fighting each other and those kids clearly are doing the same thing with their monster verse toys properly and they know what they're going in for that's what this movie targets to not just for kids but they know it's audience and the kids like they're aware of what they're going into not because they're naive they came here to see giant monsters fight and they got that so granted i'm uh, i respect everyone's opinion regarding criticizing these movies but sometimes you you look at these reviews or the critics and say like is it really hard to understand what these movies are? And I don't want to say I, I don't a type of guy that hates critics. I don't do that. That's stupid. You can critics out set out anything you want, but at the same time, it's like these movies are clearly self-aware of what they are. So why try to put them in this light what they're not trying to be? Does that make any sense? What about overall rating? I enjoyed the movie because I knew what I was coming into and what they showed me, what the movie wanted to present it to me. It does that really well. My only criticism is like there are certain things in this movie is kind of underwhelming. And I always tease one with Godzilla of all form and Scar King. Uh, while those things are still cool, they're just very underwhelming, underutilized in my opinion. There's other things in there that's kind of underwhelming. I won't spoil it, but yeah, certain things underwhelming. Uh, but overall, though, I had a good time. It was a fun, entertaining film. And again, what the movie was trying to sell me, it I understood it. I know what it was. I was know what I was going into. It was a, action popcorn watching blockbuster film and i got that anyway guys thank you for watching take care